All right, so we made it to the grand finale of the fellowship of the TensorFlow. So we've started in Python, we made it to JavaScript and to web applications, and now we are missing the last bit, which is the favorite computational environment of the biostatistician, um, RStudio, or as Daniel calls it, Mordor. So here we go. Daniel, floor is yours. All right, I'm just going to switch over. This is a, uh, a notebook, which basically is uh, listing all the commands and uh, uh, the outputs from my R script. Uh, so, you know, as with uh, all R and Python, the first thing we have to do is load some libraries. Um, the important ones to load are Keras and TensorFlow, uh, but because our data is on Google Drive, we need the Google Drive library. Uh, because the format of it is HDF5, we need to load the HDF5 R library. And of course, uh, no self-respecting R coder would not load the tidyverse. Um, on my machine, this is one of the difficulties that we're going to just have to to deal with. And you know, it, I could hear Jonas saying that this is why uh, Tensor uh, R is not the uh, ideal environment for it. But because the um, the R platform is actually uh, using TensorFlow, the Python version, through Reticulate, we have to load Reticulate, and I have to actually tell Reticulate uh, where Python is. So I'm using uh, Conda, so there's, uh, there's a command that says which Conda environment to use. Um, I have one called uh, TF. Um, so uh, we go ahead and, uh, and use that Conda environment. Since again, the data is on Google Drive, we have to use, uh, we have to authenticate using OAuth. So that's what the uh, drive auth uh, command does and it goes ahead and it will uh, go through the OAuth dance. So again one of the many sad things about uh, uh, the way this is, is going gonna, is gonna to work is I can't just load the uh, H5 file, the model, directly into uh, to to Keras, I, I have to actually download the file. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm downloading it into some temp space that I have. Uh, you have to know the the uh, file ID. So this line here is listing the uh, the the um, JS folder which ha has the file, and this is the actual file, uh, the ID for the file. Uh, if this was in my directory, I could have just used a file name, but I wasn't able to find how to take a URL and convert it to a file name. Uh, so I had to go through the ID. And then of course it- uh, And Daniel, just so you know, the, the link is now online to, to your file. I'll put it on the text, on the chat box. Okay. Um, so it's a very simple, once, once I have the, the file, this temp model is the file, um, I can go ahead and just use the Keras module to load the, the, the model in uh, with one line command. And you can see, I can take a look at the weights. So uh, I'm taking the weights of the first layer and, uh, you know, we can compare this with, uh, the weights from the Python model, but knowing the outcomes are exactly the same, I'm willing to bet that the weights are exactly the same too. But we certainly could test that. Yeah. AJ, do, do you mind having a quick look? I'm sure it's yes, but it doesn't, it wouldn't sure, yeah. hurt as if you go back to, to the original Python generated model and look for one of these weights. I think I actually remember the minus 0 0.28. Or the JSON, right? We should be able to find this in the JSON directly. I don't think so because uh, it's in the binary file. The weights are in the binary file. So I, the only way for me to see it is I'll have to load it in Python and I'll have to print out layer by layer. I can see it. Is this a um? If if you if you tell me the layer, I, I might be able to it's check. The first layer. Yeah. Okay. The minus zero point twenty eight. Let's use one number so we can all check. Um. Yeah. And one thing to um, 
to remember is that um, when I see one one, remember you should have zero zero. Um. Yeah. So if you see there, the second one is eight six two four yep. one four three. Yeah. So you can see your numbers are coming down in this direction along the. Uh, Do you see them, Prafu? Or not yet? I don't see Daniels now. I, I only see my. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me let me show my screen. Is there a way to compare? Oh, oh unfortunately, we purple. can share. Oh, purple, this is yours. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I thought it was Daniel's screen. So, if you want to compare, these were here, here. Yeah, here. they look the same. Uh, I'll. Uh, uh, I, I mean, the, the the notebook is public, anyways. Uh, if you open this link, you should be able to see. Uh, no, it'll be the. Um, let me actually republish and reshare. Yeah, if you if you open up that link. You should see the notebook and maybe then we can compare side by side. Oh yeah, it's the first one. Flow 34 by 150. Yep. And where is the chat? And it's right down. Oh, further down. Yeah, uh, just above the black box. Uh, a little more. Yeah. There are the weights. It says the final, but this is the first activation of uh, first layer. So, so you can see the negative 285, here is the 086, the 143, 83. So the order is, of course, a little different, but uh, but the weights are the same. So. It makes different sense. It's different, right? Because you use the shape parameter to fold a long array into matrices. So this does make yeah. sense, right? Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to download. I'm only going to look at the test data. So uh, again, we went and uh, we loaded the test data. Um, if it already exists, then I don't download it. But uh, because I clean up, I always have to download it. Um, and then I have to load the data. Now, this is one of the things that, you know, that. <laughs> You just got to deal with is that when I load the data, the sh the data is right, but the shape is incorrect. So because uh, R doesn't um, keep extra, you know, uh, dimensions that are unnecessary. So what I basically had to do is uh, you can see this is getting the uh, the training the X's of the data. And then what I'm doing is I'm rearranging the 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 indices so that the third index is the first index. This is very similar to like a transpose, except it's in higher dimensional. So all of the data structures should remain okay. It's just I'm changing it appropriately so that the 1,000 dimension becomes the um, becomes the first as opposed to the last uh, index. Keep in mind, our indexes start at one, not zero. So uh, every time you see a one, you, you just, you have to get used to that thing. Now, if I were just to do an image, um, the way images work is that the top right corner, I'm sorry, the upper left corner is zero, zero. Uh, this is just the opposite of, the way uh, a graph would work. So what I have to do is flip it. That's what uh, this rev is doing. It's reversing uh, the the second parameter, and um, then I have to transpose it because uh, you know the x's and the y's are not quite right. So uh, and then you can see this is a seven. You know, I have so, a really quick. Question in the MNIST data set, just remind me, is it everything is in grayscale and this is just fake color, right? Is, is that correct? This is, yes, this is fake color. If you actually looked at it, this this would be like a point something. Okay. Actually, I didn't realize that it was not binary MNIST, that it's grayscale. Interesting. Yeah. So this is yeah, it's it's a false color on the gray on the grayscale. Uh then without training at all, I took my X data and 
ran it through the model, you know? Um, and you can see these are the predictions. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I couldn't get all 10 in the, you know, it, it should be a 10 by very large number array. And you can see that uh, it doesn't quite make it. So the first one is, is this is the first one. You can see it's a seven. Um, and you can see here it falls in the eighth column. Remember that this is zero. So this is going to be a seven. Okay. So it worked. Right. Uh, and you can, so it, it did, what's that? Completely worked then, right? It's a seven. So this one worked. And you can see the second one is a two. The third one is a one. It's a zero. So what I did, because I know what the results are, um, I went ahead and, and, and ran the predict on it. So, so they were, oh, down. How hard, I'm trying to put myself in the role of the typical statistician. They would say, well, we see the scribble pad that Parful used. Let's get that PNG, maybe resize it to match the expected dimensions. And then how hard would it be to run this model on that uh, PNG? Um, it would be much easier to do it in to get the data from what's it called uh, from the screen, you know, with a scribble pad using what's it called using JavaScript. I mean, there's no question about that. Um, is it possible? I don't know. Then we'd be talking about using something like um, Shiny, and I'm not sure that Shiny has that kind of input, but it might. Yeah, I'm not sure either. So. What well, say we give you a try? If you go to the right hand side, then if you if you don't like the idea, we don't do it now. But if we have time, it would be great if you go now go down on that and you just scribble a number there. You got the seven because your your number is pushed to the left. Isn't that funny? So if you clear the canvas and just produce something with low novelty index. Yeah, now it works. Isn't that funny? Oh, we really need novelty. So now if you export this, you should get it as a PNG, I think. Right click. Uh, right click this. Mm -hmm, I think so. Yeah, save images. Now let's be really silly. You can call it nine. <laughs> My nine. Okay. And this is a PNG. And then if you open in the system viewer, you should be able to. Um, Wait, the the problem is is that th this data might not be in the right format because I need to have you know pixel intensity values. I think we're going to get it. So if, if you now open this in the system viewer, the my9 png. So you have to click on the little arrow. Oh, I'll go there. Yeah. Hold on a second. I got to get the right. For the rest of the members of the fellowship, is is this a good exercise or am I distracting um so downloads my nine so if you open system viewer right click hold on it's on the wrong screen and now resize resize yeah what what is the one it's 128 do i remember well yeah 28 by 28 okay so the the canvas isn't but yeah you'd have to what do you want so you uh, resize pixel. yeah pixels yeah. um, yeah, uh, convert like uh, click on the inches drop down, pixels. make it pixels. Yeah, and then just 28, 28 by 28. Yeah, do you want me to scale proportionally? Yes, uh, yeah, it is. I think because the height changed as well. Nice, yeah. okay, so we have a good nine. So you just have to save it and let's see how nimble is R in reading the density value, so the gray scale. From a PNG. All right, hold on a second. Let me open up our studio. Now we are talking. See, <laughs> biostatisticians are finally paying attention. Okay, so that is not it. That's not it. Actually, Daniel, sorry, I'm keep distracting you. Do you mind to share? that file with us you can put it in git i'll move it around so the rest of us can try it as well 
Oh, hold on a second. Let's let's look at the real file. Let's not look at that. This is the real file, right? So you want this? What real file? No, no, just the image, because we can all try it now. Read it. But, uh, Dan uh, the image. Daniel, wouldn't you need some kind of an image library in R to load this? Because I'm, I have an image library. Yeah. Okay. It's some sort of. Uh, I, read. Oh. I don't use it a lot. That's the problem. I'm sorry. You want the. Yeah, just this. take it to Gitter wow. and I'll I'll move it around, make it available to everybody. You got my nine. I got it. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So uh, image load. Um, maybe you can convert it to error. Image to error. You know what? I feel like there's an. You know, uh, let's not waste time. I don't know if this was meant to be too much. Yeah, you know, I am read that will be like instantaneous. If there's an I am read for R. Or I can do read PNG. And does it give you an option to make it grayscale? Because otherwise, it'll load three channels. What did I call it? My9? Yes, my9.png. All right, so you know maybe what I should do is convert this to what's it called? Uh, yeah, take your time. We we can cut these parts from the final video, Daniel. So don't worry. It will look like you've magically remembered. I am I am read in R. I I think that there's a way to save this. Oh, it's called I am read. Sorry, it's called I am read. <laughs> I am read? Yes, I'm putting the link in the chat box. Adjust color. Right. Now, Daniel, I, I think you're supposed to, no matter what you do right now, uh, your library will assume that you have three channels. You have to load it into grayscale using your image library. You know, there might be a way to convert it in R. I'm looking for it as well. And I also move the my9.png to pair, so to GitHub. So we won't lose it after Gitter deletes it. Uh, 
I don't know if I have this package. Is this imager you're looking for? The, Daniel, I don't, know if I don't have to load a new package, but Daniel, can you click the link that I just sent you and just see the first answer? So, so with the PNG package, which is what you have, uh, yeah. it, can you scroll down a bit further. So it says that if you load the image and it has four channels and it shows you how to convert from four to one. The grayscale. Three PNG. All right, so let's take a look at dim. So it's four. Take your time, Daniel. We're all learning something about R along the way. I'm playing with the PNG package. Pretty cool, actually. Okay. AJ, hey, have you tried to read it from the web directly, by any chance? Uh, you mean an image? Yes. No, to, to, you have R in your machine, right? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, just before that, I, I, um, Daniel, I think it's uh, uh, the package name is Color Space. Yeah, yeah. You found it, yeah. Oh, it does not Sorry. support. Uh, Jonas, what were you saying? No, never mind. Oh, the, I had it. it doesn't support web locations. It has to be local. Oh, okay. Not weird. It said all the web is mistreated by so many. I'm actually well. surprised there should be something like this in R. All right. So, what is Y now? Nice. You got it. What's the difference between Y and YG? So Y grayscale, I guess. All right, I don't know what the difference between these two are, but they look the same. They're 28 by 28. So, all right, I have the uh, the image. Okay. What do you want me to do? You want me to run this through and predict? Uh huh. So, what we need to do is. Um, it's right. That's going to be the first. I need to reshape it. Um, so. What I want to do is actually let me do this. I want, really want to see. Oh, it's not letting me do it. The reason I, I need to make sure that the. Uh, well, I 
right. I don't know why it's doing that. Image. This is a 28 by 28 array, right? Shape. No, that's not it. Yes, 28 by 28. Okay. And, and I'm you. just concerned that that I don't want I don't want this, but the transpose. Okay. And and Daniel, the range is from zero to one, right? Oh yeah. So I need to make this from. No, no, it's fine. It, it's fine because I I so uh, you weren't there, but. Um, uh, Proful had an issue with the rescaling layer, so we got rid of it. So we needed scale data to be fed in. So you have got the right format. This is right from 255 to 255. Uh, it, it shouldn't range from zero to 255. Uh, originally, the when you saw me build the uh, model and the data set, I was uh, using uh, inputs from zero to 255, but at that point, the model was doing the scaling for us. It was scaling from zero to one, but we eventually got rid of that layer because it isn't present in TensorFlow.js. So, so okay. we need the range to be from zero to one. So you've got so the. Just divide by two fifty five. If you you are currently ranging from zero to two fifty five, then yes. But if it's already from zero to one, then leave it as is. No, no. You can see what it is. You can see these are octal numbers. So. That's strange. They they print no, this is not right. This is much bigger than two fifty five. Yeah. FF is zero, right? No, FF is two fifty five. Oh. Zero. So this is two fifty five, and then there's another. These are binary stuff. So, I'm sorry, they're hex digits. So this is a very large number. Something is not yeah. sure about it. Because the last one can be an F, but the second to the last, if it is an F and is preceded by something, it's higher than 255. If you run min max, you're going to get a decimal output, right? Or if you have some function like that. I think I can just do this. Hmm. What? Oh, you know what? The numbers are too long. They're not integers. Is that right? I wonder if this is bigger than the max int. This is a double or a, a 
we call it a long end. Let's see, this is four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, that's 32 ints. Yeah. Okay. Can I show you something really quick, Daniel? I think it may, yeah. may help. Should be able to Are see my, screen? my R Studio. Okay. So let's make this small, clean it. Here we go. So you get the decimal. This to yeah, can you do it in? On this, to use the nine. Sorry, a beam. Do dim for it. So that would be on this object, right? Yeah, dim, and then every Oops. like this, right? First, I create an object. Oops, sorry. No, just do. Object. Okay, you can do that. X equals, and then do dim X. Yeah. So what you have is you have a three-dimensional array, and you're looking at the. Uh, but I could just pick a channel and pretend that's grayscale, right? That shouldn't destroy anything. Well, let's take a look at it. It's usually similar, so can you plot just one channel and see? Uh, Daniel, do you know how to plot this? Uh, try doing image and then the X. SPSZ matrix. And I forgot the syntax. There's oh, none of these, do, right? Uh, this doesn't no, do comma, comma, one. Like this? X? No, 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 no. X and then open uh, open your brackets. Which ones? These ones? Yeah. Comma, comma, one, close bracket. That's exactly what it should look like. Nice. Why is it rotated? Should uh, it be cool? A comma one. What's that? Oh, sorry, no, I get it. No, no. Why doesn't this change? I, they... I, so it's in all colors. I, <laughs> How funny. Okay, of course it's in all colors. And and is, is it is it is it because it's plotting it as a like on a grid starting at where where the origin is bottom left? Yeah. Oh yeah. So okay. zero 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 should be on top. Yeah. Yeah, but. If if it if it knows it's an image, why doesn't it just do that? Uh, it, because that's not the way image works. The, this had to do with the image had to do with heat maps. <laughs> oh, so I'm I'm using the PNG package, the first one you introduced us to, and I'm returning the show back to you, Daniel. Okay, let me okay. take it. So let's try this again. And I, my mouse is on the wrong. All right. So let's say x equals read p p and g. All right. And um what Jonas, what did you do? You you only look Yeah, any of the three channels because it's crazy scale, they have the same value. So if you Okay. So let's do um x equals x comma comma one. All right, so now if I look at the dimension, it's twenty-eight by twenty-eight. And then what I want to do is I want to force it to be Uh, one. Uh, 
Okay, now I need to switch the order of it. Daniel, can't you just re-index them somehow? Why do you have to go? Oh, I first have to let it know that it has three dimensions. Right, that's fine. But uh, since since it was rotated, I'm guessing the what you're trying to do is range it from one to two as opposed to zero to one. Right. Um. One second. Yeah. yeah. You know, so what I want is I want it so it's like this, right? So this is the first element, and now I have a 28 by 28 array. And hopefully this will look good. So the X's are Y's and the Y's are X's, right? Oh, uh, Daniel, I torture you one more time. Uh, before you feed it into the model, you'll have to re you have to format it to one comma twenty eight comma twenty eight comma one because I've allowed for all bat sizes. In You're your right. case, yeah, yeah, just remember. Yep, perfect. Okay, I got a nine. <laughs> now. Oh, um, so let's now, let's see, where is it? Let's go straight to the class. The the artifacts on the, the outside of the nine. Yay, it's a nine. Oh, so what is the, the right terminology for this? Uh, what's the name of the guy in Mordor that was the bad guy? Gollum. Um, yes. No. Sorry. Sorry. No, 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 no. It was um, Sauron. Sauron. Yeah, yeah. Sauron. Okay. Sauron Sor see... is dead. Congratulations, Daniel. Wait. Let's see what the scores are. See how close it was to the different things. Whoa, that's not good. Really? No. It's uh, let, let, let's look for the ones or the. Minus oh, minus. no, that's because I only wanted to predict that. So you can see it's pretty confident it's a nine. Yep. We did it. Okay, maybe I should stop the recording since this is a good moment, right? And here we go. Can I, can I button here? Yeah, you can still talk. <laughs> I just, I just like to, yeah, I, I just like to show you how. Um, how straightforward it was to kill Sauron in JavaScript. So, um, I mean, of course, it's you're bragging, uh, you're bragging, Profu. I am, I am, <laughs> and because I, I feel like TensorFlow and R should also have something similar. Uh, it, it seems very convoluted to have to uh, do this pre processing each time. So, I mean, in, in, in JavaScript, it's just that you, you get the image inside an image tag, and this function does uh, everything for you browser dot from pixels yeah there probably in. there probably is a function but you know there's yeah. hundreds of thousands of functions in r <laughs> so no i'm i'm i'm, I'm talking specifically uh, about tensorflow js having some functionality to um like read images uh, no no not tensorflow js tensorflow having some functionality to uh, just read images uh, give it the number of channels you want to you want it to read um and yeah that's i mean the, the reshaping is uh, model specific but um this this feels like it should exist in uh in python and, and in r not not browser dot from pixels but you just pass it an image and it uh pre-processes it for you if you don't mind let, let, yeah. let's look at the prediction i'm just curious if you just open it so we see nine very good okay so the same values and i was looking at the these are the exact same numbers that daniel showed us so it's all good so I'm I'm convinced by your argument by the fourth line. So if you go up, there it is. Image dot source equals to and it's a URL right there. <laughs> I'm convinced we yeah, are in Jonas, the best place. Yep. Jonas, I, I I've added a link. So through R you could have done the same thing. You you just need to plug in the URL. Oh, you're trying to resuscitate Sauron. I <laughs> <laughs> he all of us can kill Sauron is what I'm saying. <laughs> 
it's a good point. Yeah. Okay, another version of this question for, uh, for yeah. Daniel. Daniel, how easy would it be to package this in a single function? It's trivial, right? Such that someone yeah. in yeah, that, that would make form dead for sure. But you know, the difficulty is is that there's a lot of stuff we did, right? We mm -hmm. we made this a we forced this into a 28 by 28 bit array, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a 28 by 28 bit, um, you know, file, it it certainly makes life easier. Okay, so I, I guess my question then is very different. So I'm not saying can we write a function of favorite language to behave exactly the way it does in others. It's different. Is does the TensorFlow version available in our environment of choice support, for instance, reshape? It probably does. Can we have a quick to... look in Python to see if TensorFlow has? Sorry? I'm curious. If, has... Yeah, if the TFJS, how does it look like in the original TensorFlow for Python? Is there a from pixels method in TF in Python? No, this this is specific to the browser, but there there must be um, some way to pre-process the image directly using TensorFlow.js without having to resort to uh, all these other. Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's something called image data set from directory. <laughs> oh, wow. But yeah, that's a yeah. separate package, right? Oh, that's part no, of TensorFlow. TensorFlow. It's in TF Keras Utils. Can you show us? So this makes a training a data set out of a directory full of images. Oh, I yeah, see you pass it the image size, you pass it the batch size, and that's that's why I feel like TensorFlow must have thought of this. Yeah. And if if TensorFlow has it, it's going to be in Tensor the R version too, because yeah. like I said, they are the same. So it's fair to conclude that we should look for the TensorFlow syntax in our environment of choice and avoid loading additional packages. I think that's a fair as statement, much. right? Yeah, as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's if there's more, but you know, I I I'm sure that uh, you know there are more more ways to load um, images. So what I'll do here is that I'm going to stop the recording, and we have maybe 10 minutes to talk about what this means to 2022 for us, because I think what you know you guys have achieved means a lot more than we may be verbalizing right now. All right, so let's close the Fellowship of the Ring. Any last words? Uh, One. I, I, I might be wrong. I think the, the TensorFlow doc that Daniel is uh, looking at, I think it also uses the PIL library, which is a separate image processing library. Oh, so that's a ding. It thinks that the Python camp a little bit. Yeah, maybe that's because uh, PIL is that comprehensive yeah Perfect. i actually mm -hmm. suspect this is true that when people move things to javascript they also abstract them further because the language lends itself to functional patterns and other things that you know it's just no, I, I i think yeah. i i think it's more that javascript is more um i mean it's it's easier to do image processing in javascript funnily enough because of the canvas there's just so many things you can do yeah. uh that are I mean, it's it's harder to do that in Python because you have to do it computationally, whereas uh, the the API itself has uh, image processing built in uh, in the JavaScript canvas. Okay, since you mentioned that, I think you're absolutely right. I want to show you guys something because you have the same question. So I was surprised by the exact same thing, Perfo. Uh, let's see, screen share. Let me still show. You see my USM thing? So this, what this does here it used to be many lines of code, you know, this ability to change the, so here we have a full image is a quarter million nucleotides. I'm creating the uh, universal sequence map projection. So the CGR, and you can read it from wherever you want. You can read it from a string or you can read it directly from, I think it's this one, there it is, directly from NCBI. And this is being replotted, recreated, and it's all in the canvas element. The big advantage for me of the canvas element is the low memory footprint because you're just updating the values in a matrix. You're not creating an array that then you convert into a PNG file. It's all written natively in the PNG. I don't think many other languages do that. Is that a fair statement? 
I should say languages. These are the the native elements. Like the the DOM is used very elegantly, I'd say, by the the libraries of our choice. So it, I think, it's much more elegant the way I coded in JavaScript than I did in the past in MATLAB, because I don't have to make the conversion. Yeah. Um. But when when the data is written to Canvas, I don't think it's written as PNG, Jones. I mean, you can get it as PNG. You could get it as JPEG uh, as well if you wanted to. Now I can show you. The, the, the data in the canvas is, uh, I mean, it's it's an image bitmap, mm -hmm. more or less. Yeah, but it's just much more organic. Uh, let's see, USM to there it is. So if you go to plot, that's it. So I create a canvas element, give it size. Yeah. This is just for visuals. This thing is ignored then get context to D. And now I start creating, what, what is the style? I say the style is white, just write it. And I'll start writing on it, no, it's black. And then when I go through something using for each, so functional patterns now making the most, and that's it. I fill a um, little rectangle with dimension one yep. in the corresponding positions. I mean, there's nothing else. I'm not creating a matrix. That's because in MATLAB I would create a matrix and then I would transform the matrix into an image. The image format or the canvas format in in the browser already short circuits that connection. It says let's just treat the canvas as a matrix. Here, yeah. you know. Yep, that's that's it. That's exactly my point. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop the recording so we can talk about 2022 in the last few minutes. Uh, just just before we move there again, uh, Daniel, uh, I I mean I I had two questions. One of them is uh, JS from the start, but I'll start with mine. Uh, did you try using Onyx, and is Onyx also uh, dependent on Reticulate? I mean, does does it also just use the Python Pythonic implementation, or is there? A... I did not use did not use Onyx, but uh, there is an Onyx package. I can answer the second part. It, it is not based on reticulate. It's it's its own. There is a common data format that Onyx uses. It's it's similar to TensorFlow.js. It's it's completely rewritten library. I see. And that, so so the wandering to rule them all is actually Onyx because if if you can somehow port something to Onyx, it has a runtime for Python, JavaScript, and R. So you would be running the same format across all of the platforms. So we we don't have control over the wandering yet then. So Saran can't be you know, that. That's what's a little disappointing for me, uh, because if we all use different formats. If you see, so, so uh, Daniel preferred HDF5, you preferred JSON, and I mean, I, I would have technically preferred a saved model, but I would have been happy with HDF5 as well. But JSON wouldn't have worked for me. Yeah, to so, that point, uh, I'll, 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 uh, I have some news uh, uh, on that turn, but I'll, I'll uh, keep it till we are done with this point. Uh, okay, done with this discussion. Well, um, I, I don't understand. I, the, the, if you can read it in Onyx in TensorFlow, then I should be able to read it also. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying that Onyx has its own runtime. It's not based on TensorFlow, but. I'm saying that Onyx has a runtime in Python, JavaScript, and R. So uh, I, I, uh, between R and Python, there isn't that big an issue because everything that works in Python will work in R, including saved model format and HDF5. All of those formats work. The problem is when you want to include JavaScript, you have to uh, convert it either into JSON or Onyx. Those are the only two options we have. So how do you have that one format that works across the three platforms? And the only one that I can think of is Onyx. Does that make sense? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, Daniel, second question. This was JS question. What was the problem with the uh, collab that you faced? Oh, I couldn't uh, load reticulate because uh, the, the R, um, the R engine for for uh, Python J does not come with an R implement with a Python implementation. Huh. But Daniel, I was able to build and run TensorFlow models in it, so that would imply that they have reticulate, right? The, all the tutorials in that uh, blog, that R blog for TensorFlow, I was able to run them.
you you have a, a command for listing the libraries right can can you do that uh hold on a second let me um let me open up a new um let's see Just want to make sure this is our <laughs> yeah okay so what you want me to do uh so here so, well the easiest way to do is just to do library reticulate right oh you're not sharing your screen with me well that isn't really useful then what do you mean Articulate. So I think I've done this before. I don't know where my. Uh... So I can do install uh, packages. Is reticulate even necessary for TensorFlow? Is what I'm asking because I since I was able to even train models on a GPU using R, that would imply that it already has reticulate somewhere. You'll have to install it, but but uh, the configuration will, I think, install reticulate. Uh, you know what? Let me do this. So is it fair to I say that the Fantasia is ported to other languages? It's not always um, standalone. What do you mean? It means that it needs help. It needs some other package to hold its hand for specific uh, I'm, I'm our, it, It's true, but uh, I think TensorFlow helps you install all the dependencies. Th that's what I'm claiming. Ooh. See, okay, it's so it's going to install Reticulate. Uh, after this point, you don't have to load it. There is there is a setup command, and if, if you go through the tutorials in TensorFlow, there is a setup command, and that sets up everything in order. Okay, so the, the problem line, are, the important line is the last one, right? Also installing dependencies, and this installation already yes. handles the local um, issues. Okay, right, but with, uh, you're going to get an error that says something like "can't find the Python something." There, the, that's oh. that's the the issues that you know you can you can go into a certain thing, but at some point it it's going to hit something where it's going to look for something and reticulate, and it fails. Oh, I see. Uh, what were you running? Were you just loading uh, the model? I I think I was even able to load the model, which is I really wish I could find what I was doing. Okay. Um, is this it? This is actually it. See. And this is the error. So I installed TensorFlow, I called TF constant, and then it, I got this could not find an environment for it. Oh, that's not good. Especially if you're asking for Collab to be our new studio. I, I remember running these exact same commands and I didn't have a problem. This, this is from the tutorials. I can tell because the hello is misspelled and they misspelled it there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Okay, guys, we reached the end of the hour, so I think we should definitely dig deeper on this. I just want to make one point, and I'm going to stop the recording. Here we go.